Welcome, uh, welcome everybody here. Honored to be part of this event because it's uh, when you have the opportunity to talk about uh, your children, it's always uh, a beautiful, uh, beautiful occasion. Uh, just a little bit of uh, background of myself. Um, when I was a little child, I, my father and my grandfather before my father, they had uh, hi-fi shops. So when I grew up, uh, my passion was uh, for uh, design because I was able to draw pretty well and uh, my, the business of my family was hi-fi. So when I had the opportunity to uh, do the university, I, uh, I signed to this uh, course of uh, industrial design in Milan. And uh, after the graduation, my first uh, job was with uh, Lego toys, which was my passion number two. Uh, so I was, uh, I was really uh, lucky to be selected by Lego to be a, a, a designer. Then, uh, unfortunately, LEGO decided to close all the office outside Denmark uh, and uh, so they closed also the office in Milan. And so I decided to go to the first uh, business of the family back and uh, approach the i5 brand. Basically, no, I went to, uh, uh, the idea was to design i5 okay. products. Cool. And my father said, that's a very bad idea. Why you are doing that? <laughs> But I said, that, that's, that's my dream, I want to do that. So I'm, uh, uh, today I'm exactly where I want to be because uh, Sonus Faber, of course, is, was at that time and uh, still is the brand, in, the most important brand in Italy for uh, hi-fi. The brand had a lot of uh, big, big history uh, and a big heritage. Uh, and so my idea at that time was to try to innovate respecting the original uh, vision of the company. Uh, when I joined the company, uh, the company was still a small kind of company. In Italy, we, the, the, the overall uh, number of people working there was around 30. And uh, that was 2010. Uh, 2024, in Sonos Faber, we are almost 100 people, 100 person working for the company. In Italy, uh, only in Italy, in building uh, loudspeakers and uh, doing the woodwork, uh, engineers, designers, and of course all the financial thing that I don't understand. So, uh, in, in during this year we develop a lot of uh, product uh, um, and uh, we made some product that are very let me say, close to the history of uh, Sonos Faber, like Serafino, classic passive loudspeaker. But also, uh, we recently uh, started to uh, work uh, and engineering our active solution. Started with Omnia, and then uh, we felt the need of having a true stereo uh, classic uh, loudspeaker pair, and so we developed a duet. Yeah, and uh, when we approached Duetto, our idea was to make a true Sonos Faber speaker, so using uh, wood for the cabinet, uh, leather on the top, and our classic uh, recipe for uh, drivers, which is paper membrane for the, for the woofer and silk dome for the tweet. Uh, but on, on, the, on the inside of the speaker, we have uh, uh, four different amplifiers, so two per each speaker. We have uh, two uh, Class D amplifiers of 250 watts for the woofer, and we have a 100 watt uh, Class AB for the tweeter. With this uh, configuration, of course, we have the ability to uh, tune the response of the bass frequency uh, using all the excursion that the woofer is able to, to do um, and also uh, to protect the woofer from over excursion. So what you have is um, reproduction of the bass frequency with, which is pretty impressive for the size uh, but with very low distortion. So the way we designed the um, digital crossover uh, was pretty interesting because uh, with DSP you can, uh, you think you can do whatever you want, but uh, in the reality, every filter is acting a little bit like a passive filter. So if you have uh, filters that are 
uh, altering the face of each driver, the result will be bad as you are using a passive filter. So we approached the design of uh, the, filter, the digital filter like we are approaching the design of the passive filter, uh, the analog filter in the classic speaker. And what we do is normally we align the face of each independent driver to be parallel but separated of a certain degree, which is our recipe, to make that wide sound stage, but don't create the illusion of this strange bubble where you have big instruments and small instruments. So, of course, the speaker is integrating all the streaming services available, so Tidal, Cobus, uh, Spotify Connect, uh, Rune, uh, Bluetooth, everything uh, available because we, don't, uh, we, we want to be open to any preference of our customers. Um, what we have here is um, our, um, a member of the Homage uh, family. Why we call it Homage is because when uh, the company started this line of loudspeaker, they started uh, with the idea of uh, using some of the know-how we have in Italy in building violins. So the original idea of the founder of the company was to build the speakers like the violins were built. Uh, so using a wooden closure with this uh, special uh, shape that we call a lute shape because it reminds the shape of a violin. And uh, not all of uh, our customer knows that Sonus Pabe was the first of using the lute shape. Uh, because of controlling the uh, internal uh, uh, reflection and uh, now it's really uh, diffused, very popular, but Sonus Faber was the first with the Guarneri homage. So this particular line of speaker was always famous to be able to reproduce um, acoustic instrument and voices in a, in a very uh, realistic way. In this case we have uh, the fifth generation of the homage uh, family. But in this case, this is G2 because Serafino was introduced uh, two years, uh, one generation before. Before it was only Guarneri and Amati. Um, so what's new in this generation, uh, fifth generation of homage? Basically everything because we designed it from scratch all the drivers. And uh, we designed all the drivers internally because we now have a team of uh, speaker designers uh, that are coming from the pro audio world, so the guys that do uh, drivers for uh, acoustic instruments. Yeah, and uh, we uh, decided to hire new engineers coming from the pro audio because, of course, in the pro, pro audio you have a lot of competition and uh, uh, the technology is uh, really up to date. So we are using very powerful uh, motor system and also suspension system uh, coming from that world, but we are still using our classic uh, paper membrane as uh, we always did. Some very interesting uh, thing about this generation is that, yeah, that's a porno moment. <laughs> Maybe I will step aside a bit. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> After a week you say that? Okay. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, we have a new mid-range which is equipped with a face uh, plug. And this plug is uh, basically helping the dispersion of the mid-range uh, on the out-of-axis dispersion. Because what happens in a normal cone uh, uh, membrane is that the internal uh, fr the, the frequency in the internal part of the cone are cancelling each other. So, and this uh, results in a very narrow dispersion. When you apply this technology, the dispersion goes very wide. And in this way, you can improve the sound stage. Plus, the chamber of the mid-range is still a lute chamber, but it has an additional uh, chamber that we call it intono. What the intono does is uh, normally any uh, acoustic, um, uh, let me say, dynamic driver loaded in a box, uh, it has a peak of e impedance, which is uh, based on the characteristic of the driver and the dimension of the chamber. 
peak of impedance. So it's a big peak in the response. And uh, normally this peak, uh, you had to handle this peak with the crossover uh, components. To proper flatten that peak, you have to add uh, some uh, electric uh, uh, circuit, which are acting a little bit like equalizers. But in this case, since we wanted the perfect uh, uh, reproduction of the mid-range, we, we wanted to avoid that circuit. And so Intono has uh, a little hole in the first chamber, which connect the first chamber to the second chamber, and the second chamber is tuned to kill that peak. So this way we can use less uh, electric components and we can have a more pure, uh, let me say, treatment of the signal. Another important uh, thing is that uh, the new drivers of the new series of uh, uh, homage collection are equipped with uh, neodymium magnets. And this is why, if you look at the specs, the old Serafino is uh, heavier than the new Serafino, uh, because we have less ferrite, uh, because neodymium is much more efficient. Configuration is pretty simple, it's a three-way design with these two woofers in parallel and the mid-high mid, uh, mid frequency which is using this series crossover which is a more simple way to do crossover design. But the recipe is the classic Sonos Faber recipe, so paper membrane for the mid-range and silk dome. Plus we are using our patented DAD technology which is a technology which uh, help a soft membrane like the silk uh, to extend the frequency range up to 30 kilohertz. What this technology does is basically is uh, touching the apex of the dome because what happens in, in a dome uh, design is that when the tweeter is moving, it's a micro movement, but it's still moving, the apex of the dome does this. And this movement in the apex of the dome is cancelling the higher frequency. So this is not happening uh, uh, clearly with uh, hard uh, domes, like aluminum domes or beryllium domes, but uh, for our uh, experience those uh, materials are not reproducing a very natural sound, they are reproducing a lot of detail, but sometimes is a little bit artifact. Uh, so, very classic uh, Sonus Faber uh, recipe with a modern uh, technology, basically. Uh, those speakers are 100% uh, made in Italy in our factory and uh, now that we have also the wood uh, uh, shop inside the factory we are able to control every part of uh, the uh, development of the speaker and also its uh, construction. In particular the Homage series is using our classic uh, high gloss uh, uh, finish which is uh, 11 layers of uh, uh, painting and uh, each uh, bench of uh, production of these cabinets require one month to be done. Then of course we have leather on the front and we are using uh, aluminium milling from uh, blocks basically for the head, the base and the back uh, of, of the speaker. Okay, now I will play some tracks, uh, maybe different from the tracks we heard with the duetto. Um, the first track is a track that is a very old recording from an Italian singer, uh, so it's not a perfect recording at all. But again, this is a track that I was uh, listening a lot with my grandfather when uh, we were together in a, in a shop. <laughs> Parola dolce, panamma murata. 